In this video, we will take a look at how to calculate the worst case time complexity of the insertion sort program we have written earlier and thereby determine the big O of this program. So let's start counting the primitive operations. n is equal to array dot length is going to take me unit time. Each of these statements will take unit time. So this will be 1 plus 1 equal to 2. Now let's come to the loop. The loop runs from 1 all the way till it is strictly less than n. So let's say I have an array and the input size of the array is 5 or that there are 5 elements in this array. So what are the values of i? i is going to be 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. It does not go to 5 because it is going to be strictly less than n or strictly less than 5. So how many times does this loop execute? 4 times or n minus 1 times. With that in mind, let's see how much time this for loop is going to take. Initialization is going to take unit time because it happens only once. The condition is going to take one more than the number of times this loop executes. It's going to take n minus 1 times. It's going to be checked when it enters the loop and one extra time when it is the condition fails and we come out of the loop. So it's going to take n minus 1 plus 1 times which is going to be n times. Let's look at the condition. The co let's look at the increment, sorry. So the increment will occur as many times as the loop runs. So this will happen n minus 1 times. So in total, this loop statement is going to take a total of 2n units of time. So we said that the loop runs n minus 1 times. This statement on its own includes an indexing into an array and an assignment. So it is 2 on its own, but it will happen n minus 1 times because it is inside the loop. Space is equal to i will happen n minus 1 times because it is within the loop. Now let's look at our j loop. So let's take the same example and see how the j loop will execute. We have said that n is equal to 5. So for n being 5, what are the values of i? i will be 1, 2, 3, then 4. What have we said about j? We say that j starts from a value space minus 1. Space is equal to i, so we can say that j starts from a value i minus 1 and ends at the value equal to 0. So j starts at a value i minus 1, so it starts at 0 and ends when it is equal to 0. So for the, when i is equal to 1, j is equal to 0. When i is equal to 2, j is equal to 1 and then 0. When i is equal to 3, it is 2, 1 and then 0. When i is equal to 4, it is 3, 2, 1 and then 0. So let's see the number of times the j loop is executing. When i is equal to 1, j loop executes one time. When i is equal to 2, the j loop executes 1, 2, 2 times. i is equal to 3, j loop executes 3 times. When i is equal to 4, j loop executes 4 times. So with this in mind, what are the different or rather how many times does this j loop execute? It will execute once, then twice, then thrice, all the way till it reaches n minus 1 or all the way till it reaches 4. This is when n is equal to 5. So it is 1 time plus 2 times plus 3 times all the way till it reaches n minus 1 times. So this is the number of times the j loop executes. Let us say that this expression is equal to x. 
this is just so that when we are counting the operations it's going to be easy for us to write down instead of writing this whole expression at all times so the j loop executes x times which means it executes once then twice then thrice till n minus 1 times so let's look at the loop statement initialization occurs every time the loop is invoked but only once when the loop is invoked this loop will be invoked n minus 1 times the initialization will occur n minus 1 times once for each time the loop is called then we have the condition the condition occurs as many times as the loop is called plus one extra time when the condition is not satisfied and we break from the loop increment occurs as many times as the loop is entered now it is important to note that we are performing the time complexity analysis for the worst case time the worst case scenario of an algorithm which is trying to sort an array in ascending order like insertion sort is when the input comes in as a descending order array in such cases the loops are going to be executed maximum number of times and the if statement is going to be entered at every time that is we never break from the loop prematurely during the worst case that's why I say that the condition will be checked x plus one times and the increment will be done x times this is because we are checking the worst case and the loop will never end prematurely in its worst case so let's look at what this statement means n minus one times for the increment each time the loop is called x plus 1 times for the condition and x times for the increment. Now the question may arise why I am not multiplying x plus 1 or x with n minus 1 even though I multiplied n minus 1 with the one primitive operation it takes to perform the initialization. I am not multiplying n minus 1 in these in the condition and the increment because when I say that the loop runs x times, I am taking into consideration all instances of i. When i is 1, loop runs 1 time. When i is 2, loop runs 2 times. When i is n minus 1, loop runs n minus 1 times. So, when I say x, it is inclusive of all the times the j loop will run within all the instances of the i loop. So, I need not multiply it by n minus 1 because x is going to include all instances of j under all instances of i. That is the number of times the j loop executes in total. So now let's go into the j loop. The condition will be checked at all times. So it's going to take one primitive operation for the indexing, one primitive operation for the condition. So two primitive operations in total but performed x times if loop will always be entered because it's the worst case this is two indexing operations plus one assignment so this is equal to 3x space is equal to j is 1 but it will happen x times and continue will happen x times this statement will never be performed because the loop will never be terminated prematurely now we come out of the j loop and we have a statement in the i loop this is indexing and assignment so it's going to take two primitive operations on its own but since it's part of the i loop it will take n minus one times now we are out of the i loop and we return the array so it's going to take one primitive operation this is how you count the number of primitive operations in the insertion sort. Now we have to add all these individual stepwise time calculations. So adding all those stepwise calculations up we get time of n is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2n plus 2n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus n minus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x 
plus 2x plus 3x plus x plus x plus 2n minus 1 plus 1. Simplifying this, which is going to be equal to 8n plus 9x minus 1. This is equal to t of n. Now, when we speak of time, we want it to be purely in terms of input size or n. So, let's see how we can simplify x in terms of n and substitute it back. We have said that x is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way till n minus 1. So, as you can see, this is a series in arithmetic progression. So, in arithmetic progression, if we have a series 1, 2, 3 all the way till some value k, we say that the sum of this series is equal to k into k plus 1 divided by 2. In this case, if we use this formula in x, we say that x is equal to n minus 1, n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to n, n minus 1 divided by 2. Substituting x in the equation for time, we get time is equal to 8n plus 9 by 2n square minus 9 by 2 n minus 1. This is our equation for time in the worst case. Now, with different implementations, the constants are going to change. So, this is why we opt for big O notation to get an overall view of the growth of this function with respect to n. So, let's try to calculate the big O notation. To find the big O of this function, we have to select that term which is going to affect the growth of the time most influentially with respect to n. That term is going to be 9 by 2 n square because this term is going to make time grow with respect to n in a quadratic fashion. This is going to influence the time growth with respect to n the most. So, we say that t of n is order of Ignoring the constant in this term, we say it is order of n square. Or we can say that insertion sort is order of n square in its worst case. This is how you determine the big O notation for the insertion sort program and algorithm.